Hosting the FIFA World Cup often represents a historical milestone and symbolic achievement for the host country, with major implications for local communities, infrastructure development, and service provision. It includes the employment and training of thousands of workers and volunteers, the transportation of hundreds of thousands of fans, and the protection of people's health and safety throughout the tournament. The FIFA World Cup is unique in many respects. It was anticipated that over 1 million spectators will attend the tournament's 64 matches, and the competition will reach a global in-home television audience of over 3 billion people, with more than 1 billion fans tuning in to watch the final match. In addition to the matches, there are a host of other official competition-related events, including draws, team, and referee seminars and workshops, opening and closing ceremonies, award ceremonies, cultural events, press conferences, and launch events. Hey, welcome back to another episode of Flair Success. Here, we have something for everyone. From top 10 style informative videos, mind-blowing facts, and fascinating topics of what luxurious and interesting things the world has to offer. Have you subscribed to be part of the Flair Success community yet? The First World Cup in the Middle East Qatar is about the size of Yorkshire, with 2.8 million residents in the country. But due to the country's size, it is the richest in the world in terms of per capita. The FIFA World Cup 2022 in Qatar is the first to be hosted in the Middle East. In the build-up to 2022, Qatar has spent billions of dollars constructing some of the most eco-friendly and architecturally advanced sporting facilities, undertaking enormous economic and infrastructural developments, and investing in the rapid expansion of its football capacity. Qatar is also set to make history, as it is the first country to host World Cup in the Northern Hemisphere, not to be held in the summer. Instead, the tournament was scheduled from November 20th to December 18th. It is to be played in a reduced time frame of around 28 days, with the final being held on 18 December 2022, which is also Qatar's national day. How did Qatar get the 2022 FIFA World Cup? Qatar has for years rejected criticisms to its effort to win the World Cup as jealousy or, worse, Western racism. May Nichols' verdict on Qatar, the product of a three-day visit to Doha in September 2009, was hardly a resounding endorsement. Number 1. May Nichols said Qatar was too small. It was a huge problem for organization. Number 2. In the Northern Hemisphere summer, the traditional window for playing the World Cup, it was simply too hot. Qatar had gamely tried to assuage those concerns by building a small stadium to demonstrate the futuristic air conditioning system it said would ensure all of the games would be played in close to ideal conditions. Maine Nichols was impressed, but the issue remained. The problem would be for supporters on non-game days. He said, it is 38 or 40 degrees Celsius in June. He said, it is impossible to do anything on the street. Qatar took its first step on the road to hosting the FIFA World Cup 2022 by establishing its bid team in 2009. The bidding team was headed by H.E. Sheikh Mohammed bin Hamad bin Khalifa Al Thani. Qatar promoted its hosting of the tournament as representing the Arab world and drew support from across the member states of the Arab League. Five candidates including Qatar, Australia, South Korea, Japan and the USA submitted bids for the highly prized hosting rights on 2 December 2010. FIFA announced that Qatar will host the FIFA World Cup in 2022 after the FIFA Executive Committee voted by ballot in Zurich. What is the budget for the FIFA World Cup 2022 Qatar? Since Qatar won the bid to host the quadrennial showpiece event in 2010, the Gulf country has spent huge sums of money in preparation. Seven new world-class stadiums have been built in and around Qatar, which should host a total of 64 matches in the month-long tournament. The total cost for building the new stadiums alongside renovating the two existing ones is reported to be between $6.5 billion and $10 billion. This is a significant increase from the initially proposed bid of $4 billion, as per U.S. sports finance consultancy Front Office Sports, a sum of $210 billion is said to have been spent on developing airports, rebuilding roads, innovative hubs with hotels and sophisticated underground transportation, 
At the same time, around $15 billion has been spent in Doha alone on an accommodation complex known as the Pearl, while $36 billion was spent on the Doha Metro. Expected Revenue from FIFA World Cup 2022 Qatar As per reports, Qatar's finance ministers admitted to spending $500 million on a weekly basis for years during the country's preparation for the mega footballing event. It is pertinent to mention that Russia spent $11.6 billion to organize the tournament in 2018, while Brazil spent $15 billion in 2014. However, Qatar is said to have spent more than $220 billion during the course of the infrastructure project. A total of 3 million tickets are said to have been sold across the eight stadiums in Qatar for the World Cup. This suggests that FIFA will receive a record revenue for the tournament which will certainly be more than the $5.4 billion they made in Russia in 2018. As per reports, the match tickets prices for games in Qatar are around 40% more than the tickets sold during the previous edition. How will the 2022 FIFA World Cup impact Qatar? Financial analysts all across the world have estimated that Qatar's GDP will rise by 4.1% by the end of 2022. The country's GDP will grow by an average of 3.2 annually between 2022 and 2030. The host nation Qatar has promised that it would be the most expensive World Cup as it would bring employment to the nation. Which has directly affected the country's economy. It has created more than 1.5 million jobs in key sectors like construction, real estate and hospitality. The tourism industry is also believed to be affected largely by this. And with that, we've reached the end of this episode with the FIFA World Cup 2022. Let us know your thoughts in the comments section down below. If you found it helpful, remember to leave a like on the video and subscribe to Flare Success for even more amazing videos. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.